current TV belt holder is back, teaming up with Rip Morgan in a torrid tag match against Tony Rickard and Samoan Joe. There's two singles matches, Peter Lauder versus Jack Lockie. Just luck by do know who it is. Hammerlock counter. Another counter by do know who it is. Do know who it is with an overarm wrist lock. Tom Drag was there. Rocky leaves the ring. I think he meant to fall like that, Steve. He well, he catapulted him right in and uh, claimed that he had lost it. He came in very easily. Well, they both pretty well fired up. Head scissors. Another arm drag. I'm locked by uh, Larky. Larky takes the hair, dragging uh, Uya to his feet. Another takedown, hits with the counter. Nice arm drag. He's certainly uh, lucky, he's certainly putting everything into it, Barry, but there's a nice uh, counter and a hammerlock yep. by Juno Huya. Well, he's playing on those ropes. It's lucky to get the break. Referee calls for a break. Good takedown. Both wrestlers showing uh, plenty of wrestling knowledge. The free break again. Side headlock applied. Side headlock. It's just seesawing backwards and forwards, this match. Been lucky in Huya. Now Huya's turned for the upper hand. Reverse hammerlock applied. Sandra Singh. Ooh. Fireman's lift counter. Backbreaker by Larkin. Hard work there by Lucky. Could be it. Well, he's looking hard for that counter, Steve. For, yes. that, uh, for that count, should I say. Yes, he's looking Lucky. for a ball. He realizes there's not too much left in this match. And, uh, Lucky uh, had the count of two, but there doesn't seem to be really too many close falls in this match, Barry. Don 
goes for the end of the match. The referee's decision, a draw. We saw a very fast wrestling match uh, with holds being swapped uh, by both wrestlers, Larky and Juno, giving a great exhibition of wrestling. And it was towards the end of the match where Larky actually took to, uh, Juno, threw him into the ropes, crossed the ring, and as he came off, he turned around to catch him in a very high hip toss. And the result of the match, of course, was a draw. Our next weekend in New Zealand, and uh, that's the weekend of June 25th and 26th, is Telethon, and I certainly hope and I really know that you'll all be supporting that. But Steve, for, uh, for Telethon, it, it really is for people like Chris Gore. Remember him? I certainly do remember Chris Gore, Barry. Some time ago, Ernie Leonard and myself were fortunate enough to be invited to Pongaroa to uh, meet one of New Zealand's greatest wrestling fans, Christopher Gore. It's Christopher Gore. There's you. Next to him, or seated uh, beside his bed, is myself. Looking young there. And then we go on to Ernie Leonard, who was with me on that day, and Christopher's sister. Now, Christopher's confined to bed, Steve, right? He's confined to bed with an unfortunate disease, Barry, and it's uh, people like Christopher that remind us of telephone, of course. And uh, as I said, we were fortunate enough to go to his home and meet him and it's something you'll never forget. Right, well, of course, the telethon is about the family this year, and uh, Chris Gore got a lovely family there, uh, very, very supportive family indeed, but he'll certainly be watching out for us. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, everybody on telethon, uh, you and I will be down uh, uh, near his way anyway, down in Hamilton. Well, of course, uh, uh, Christopher has been the uh, uh, telethon on the mat mascot for, uh, uh, for the years that we've known him, and uh, as you say, we will be in Hamilton Barry, uh, Pongaro is uh, some ways from there, but uh, mm. you and I will be in Hamilton and it will be a great thing to see people donating to a cause such as what Telethon's for. Right, echo those sentiments, so uh, get behind the Telethon for the family uh, the weekend of June 25th and 26th, this coming weekend, the Telethon. Well now to match two in this program and it's Peter Lauder against Merv Fortune. Peter Lauder is coming up to set the ring. Referees are uh, locked and no fortune pushes him to a hammerlock, uh, into Phil Nelson. Heads it in by fortune. Well, I think Peter Lauder is a little niggly with that one. Good start by Merv Fortune. Now Peter Lauder attempting to get his own back, but no, back comes Fortune. Another hits in the scouter by Fortune. He's up onto his hands to gain more leverage. Oh, they're trying to uh, push, push his way out from the, between the legs of the Fortune. Comes up, holding on the legs. The toe hold applied. Now that must be particularly painful what he's doing there, Steve. This one he's forcing down on uh, on both knees to get pressure there, uh, Barry. It was a fist by Fortune to uh, to break clear of that hold. Pulls uh, Lord of the rope. Gives a big elbow. Drags him up out of here. Another big forearm into the uh, neck. Fortune now taken over in this match. Oh, heavily, heavily. Everyone by fortune is through the head of uh, Peter Lauder into the turnbuckle. Knee into the back and uh, lean back on the chin. No, Lord, Lord has really been given no chance to make a start in this match against Merv Fortune. Here he's actually got his knee in the back of uh, Peter Lauder. Fortune's knee is in the, into the back, middle of the back of Peter Lauder as he pulls on that chin. Fortune with a great advantage over Peter Lauder. Peter Lauder 
not having had the experience or the opportunity to gain the experience that Fortune uh, has had in Salt. Fortune wrestled for many overseas wrestling stars, also made so many overseas trips. And uh, this is showing up in this match now against Peter Lawyer. Oh, yes, certainly see that, Steve. But he's just, at, at the moment, Fortune seems so unrelenting. Really giving it all. Yeah, Stan, that's right, Barry. He's not, uh, not letting up at all, giving uh, Lord no chance to come back into this match. He uh, seems to be setting his mind on the fact that he's uh, taking over and he's going to stay on top uh, all the way through it. Yeah, I think that's the sole thing in his mind. A short little respite for Lauder doesn't seem to do any good either as Merv Fortune just pounds on. Lauder comes back, throws the forearm into the back. And another one. Fortune trying to reach through. Looks as like if he's looking for a bear hug. Rams Lauder into the, into the turn buffer. Knee to the stomach. A bit of hair pulling going on there. Both got a fair amount of hair to pull, though. Strangle applied. The referee uh, telling Fortune to break. Fortune throws Lauder into the ropes again. And a big elbow. Picks him up for a body slam. Fall to Merv Fortune and also the match. Fortune was unrelentless in this match. He pounded away at Lauder right from start to finish. It was at this stage where he pulled Lauder to his feet, scooped him up in a slam, and followed through with a power slam. The referee went down to the canvas and the count. Three. And the match went to no fortune. Just before we go back to ring action, we have a big news flash for you tonight. Well, Steve, certainly for World Pro Wrestling fans, it's a news flash, and that is that Ric Flair has lost his world title. Yes, it was certainly a news flash uh, because Ric Flair did lose his world title, Barry. He lost it in St. Louis last Friday, the 10th of June. He lost the title to Harley Race, and it was the seventh time that Harley Race has, in fact, captured the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, to, to you, a bit of a surprise? Well, it was a surprise to me because I thought Flair was a great champion. But then again, I've also wrestled Harley Race, and uh, when Harley Race was the then world champion, and uh, he also is, or was, and is a great champion. Right, so Harley Race getting the world title from Ric Flair. Now, we had many queries at the end of last week's uh, TV belt final, you remember, between Larry O'Day and Tony Rickard, and why Larry O'Day wasn't disqualified for actually throwing Tony over the top rope. Now, Steve, what's the answer there? Well, uh, that's true. We've had a lot, of, a lot of inquiries as to why he was not disqualified. Uh, the rulings are, and uh, let me go back to when uh, uh, Ric Flair wrestled Mark Lewin. Uh, Mark Lewin was, in fact, disqualified for throwing Flair over the top rope. Now, Mark Lewin, in fact, thought he had won the match when, in fact, he hadn't because of this ruling, a ruling which he was not aware of at the time. The National, ruling, the National Wrestling Alliance rulings state that in a world title match, you cannot throw an opponent over the top rope. So Mark Lewin was rightly disqualified. However, the National Wrestling Alliance rulings also state that in a non-title match, that this rule does not apply. So therefore, Larry O'Day was not disqualified, and the referee was correct in his decision for counting Tony out and giving the match to Larry O'Day. From this point, he took O'Day by the arm, hurled him across the ring into the opposite turnbuckle, went for his favorite hole, the climb up, and it, it was here where O'Day actually tipped him over the top rope onto the floor outside where he injured himself and was unable to return to the ring, and O'Day won the match and the title. 
final match in World Pro Wrestling is a tag match with Larry O'Day and Rip Morgan up against Tony Rickard and Samoan Joe. like uh, Samoan Joe and Larry O'Day. Right. Now these two would be giving a bit of weight away, wouldn't they? Not so much Samoan Joe. They'd be giving a bit of weight away, wouldn't they? Yes, uh, for sure. O'Day would uh, weigh in approximately, I'd say, about 250 pounds. And uh, Morgan, of course, uh, near the 280 mark. I'm sure that Samoan Joe and Tony uh, could match that within probably 50, 50 to 60 pounds. Well, Samoa Joe and Larry O'Day are already fired up in this tag match. It should be a mighty exciting one. Oh! Lovely work by Samoa Joe. Well, there's some fast moving this match right from the very start. Samoa Joe's in there, Larry O'Day. And we're action all the way. Samoa Joe now hangs Tony Rickard. Tony Rickard comes in, takes the arm of the day, and throws a foot into the chest. Well, after losing the TV belt last week, uh, Tony will be willing to get some of his own back here. Morgan reaching across the ropes for the tag. The day tags Morgan, he has Tony on the ropes, and Morgan comes in, brings a foot into the stomach. The referee orders the day out of the ring. Powerful Morgan. Nice Tony Rickard up by the throat and just hurled him away from him. Big strong man is Rip Wolf. He's a strong man, but if they had a bit more weight and strength there, might have been able to uh, turn the table. Oh, lovely one. Lovely it's one. a fall. Almost a fall, but they come through in illegally and uh, pushes Tony off. Referee orders the Mo and Joe out of the ring. Almost certain fall there, Steve. Very, very, very close, uh, Larry. And uh, I would say, had O'Day not come in, uh, as you say, it would have been a certain fall. Nice, good work by Tony Ricker. Test of strength. Morgan takes uh, Tony Ricker across. And he throws a fist in the stomach. Jeopardy Darmus brings the elbow down to the shoulder. Tags his partner, Simone Joe. Oh, Joe in. Nice one there. Nice one set up for him as uh, Tony made the tag, then threw Morgan into the ropes. Samoan Joe was waiting. And he came off those ropes. Samoan Joe right into this match. Yes, is he what? Trying to make the tag. Trying to make the tag with Larry O'Day and has made it. He allows the tag. O'Day comes in. It's caught, taken down to canvas. Somehow Joe didn't wait around for that one. It's a breaker on the ropes. One of those vicious upper numbers by Larry O'Donnell. Okay. He, he can get real vicious, this guy. Oh, nice throw into the turnbuckle. Nice one. An action in this match. Well, there's that famous headbutt on Samoan Joe's. for the fall. Got up two. O'Day's made the tag. Walking in. There's a fist at uh, Samoan Joe and rolls him into the road. Close line. Watch Samoan Joe to canvas. Samoan Joe trying to make the tag. He's made it. Oh, nice drop kick by Tia. And another one. Two beautifully timed drop kicks and Morgan hits the canvas. Comes up and uh, T.R. throws him into the ring. Oh. Back drops him. Another drop kick. Morgan goes down. Makes the tag. I'm not Just. saying an answer, Morgan. One too many and O'Day moves away. Heavily into the turnbuckle. No hold part of this exciting tag match. Bear hug applied and O'Day rushes across oh. to ram Tony into the corner. Followed vicious rest on Larry O'Day. Another hug and... Ooh. Well, Tony's certainly on the receiving end of uh, things now, and he's made a lot of punishment. Turnbuckle. Morgan hurls him in the ropes. 
Toss. No tip toss for Evan Morgan. Now he's made the tag on Larry O'Day. They had to take over and he's stuck in once again. O'Day seems to relish being nasty. Joe's enough for me, but I'll hang out as long as I can. But the tag's been made. Back comes River Morgan. Double kick and they knock Samoa and Joe down. And Tony Rickard comes in. Larry Day throws Whoa. him out of the ring. Referee's there. He's pushed aside. Referee pushed aside the corner. And the referee has uh, called an end to this match. Have, have to Trying be. to stop. He's called an end to this match. Tony Rickard back in the ring. And they're taken over on those day and the Morgan. Uh, Samoa and Joe holding Morgan in the corner, calling to uh, Tony, and they throw Morgan and Larry Day across the ring. Both wrestlers uh, hit the mid, mid ring, they pull to their feet again, and you have Larry Day once again, and they throw both wrestlers in the ring. Double backdrop by Samoa and Joe and oh, here. Morgan and Day leave the ring. The referee looks as if he's about to raise the hand. He's raised the hands of Samoa and Joe and Tony Rickard, having disqualified uh, Rip Morgan and Larry O'Day. <laughs> Real action. The most spectacular point of the match was after the gong. Samoa and Joe and Tony Rickard took both O'Day and Rip Morgan. They hurled them across the ring into the far ropes. As they came off the ropes, Samoan Joe and uh, Tony were waiting to take them in two high backdrops. Well, Tony, you come up against, of course, Larry O'Day, the man who took the TV belt from you last week. I bet you were out to prove a point there. Yes, I was just lucky that I had, did have a good partner in this match here. And uh, we were giving a little bit of weight away there. But uh, we, I think we gave out as much as we took anyway. Now, I believe that your dad, Steve, has issued a challenge for the TV belt on Larry O'Day. Yes, I think he has. I think if Valerio Day accepts that challenge there, he'd be finding a different story there. Because uh, they're both pretty evenly weighed out there. And uh, they both have about the same amount of experience. So I don't think Larry would be as mouthy as he, as he normally is there if he does decide to accept that match. Well, can you go along with that, Joe? Sure, of course, uh, Barry. Excuse me, Barry, can I say something in my name? Stay love and love from Alex Moon, Nepal. Larry O'Day. Or Steve Ricard Leo was our new lover, Louis Fapitoa Oi, in the Commonwealth title, for six, in our title lover. Yeah, as soon as Steve Ricard, yeah, pull my own phone, yeah, like that, which is the Ailung and Maya. When you have a fast song, I'll just know, thank you, Barry. Well, a good win to uh, Simone Joe and uh, Tony Ricard. Well, that's it from World Pro Racing for this week. Join me and Steve with more on the Mad Action next time.